Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel where I show you guys how to get that high-end designer look on a budget. My name is Jenna and today I'm going to be showing you some really simple, quick, easy holiday decor DIYs. Now, what better way to get into the holiday spirit than DIYing your home decor? I know this time of year can get crazy and stressful and time is usually limited, so I really tried to keep these very quick, simple, user-friendly, and use minimal craft supplies. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So our first DIY is going to be a rustic bell wreath. And I had been seeing these all over Pinterest and I knew I wanted to make one, but rustic bells can be very expensive. So I did a lot of work and research to source really affordable materials for this wreath. So the overall cost of this guy was under $35, which I think is really good because it looks a lot more expensive than that. So yeah, let's get into the DIY. Okay, so we first started with this surprisingly cheap wreath from Walmart. It was only $13 for a 24 inch wreath, which I thought was really good. I love the pine cone detail and how realistic the greenery looks. And then I found these really pretty rustic bells online at Walmart. A pack of four was only $12 and I bought a couple just for future projects. And for this project, I only used three because of my wreath size. So next, I just took some jute cord that I also bought from Walmart for $3 and I doubled up the strings just because of how thin it was. So in total, I had six strings for three strings of two, if that makes sense. But I just tied a double knot onto each one of the bells and then cut off the excess cord. And then I just kind of staggered my bells in a cascade so that way when they're hanging on the wreath, it just looks a bit more visually pleasing than a random grouping or them all being on the same level. And then I just tied a knot to secure the shape and then just tied them all onto the back of the wreath. Super duper simple. And then for a final finishing touch, I found this black velvet ribbon at HomeGoods, but I believe Target sells an even thicker one for the same price. And I will link that as well as all of the project materials down below. But I just tied the ribbon into a bow, attached it to the wreath with a safety pin, and then I cut the ends of the bow in a pretty V shape to make them look just a tad bit more fancy. And there you have it, a super easy, elegant, and classy rustic bell wreath for under $35. I did end up moving the bell down onto the bell string, but after watching this footage, I kind of like it at the top better, but that's the beauty of the safety pin. You can change up the color, size, or position of the bow really easily. I also like this wreath so much, I decided to display it on top of my kitchen cabinets as a focal point because I just love the minimal elegance it brings to my space and that I'm able to look at it all the time. Okay, so for this next DIY, I really wanted to incorporate moss somehow into my Christmas decor. I just think that it's a very expensive looking material. I see it a lot used in restoration hardware, pottery barn, ballard designs. So I figured it'd be kind of a fun thing to do a DIY with. And it's a very organic, natural material and really helps bring the outdoors inside, which is something I really tried to do in my home decor. So I came up with this idea of moss Christmas trees. They're very very simple, very minimalistic, and they're so easy and cheap. So without further ado, let's get into project number two. <laughs> Okay, so to start, I just took a piece of poster board that I got from the dollar store and I marked out a half circle using a pen and some string. I then cut it out and rolled it into a cone shape and I just used some packaging tape to secure it and that's really it. I did have a little bit of a gap on the top of the cone and it bothered me so I tried to make another mini cone to fit into that gap and just make the top of the cone a bit more pointy, I guess. But I will say that later into the project, the mini cone fell out and I didn't really need it because the moss was going to cover it up anyway, but hey, A for effort, right? So next I just took the sheet moss that I found in the floral section at Walmart and started breaking it up into little pieces. I found that the moss went a lot further if you broke it up into tiny little chunks. So then I just took my hot glue gun and started applying the moss. I also found that if you really press on the moss while you're applying it, there's less shedding and bald spots. So I just gave the bottom a little trim so that it could stand up once we did the bottom layer and I kept going on the rest of the cone. So 
So as I went, I just kept my eye out for little white spots and filled them in as needed. And once I got to the top, as you can see, my little mini cone fell out, but I just put a good amount of hot glue on there and pressed a chunk of moss in just to cover up the opening and it was totally fine. So after I had covered the whole cone, it was time for a little haircut just to snip off the stray moss strings and make it look a little less wild. So after doing that, there were a couple little spots I saw that I wanted to fill in and I just did that with the little dads of hot glue and I used the leftover moss hairs that fell from the haircut. So super simple and easy. And then I decided to make three in total. So this was my medium size one. And then I also went on to make a really large one and then a little mini guy too. And that's really it, you guys. I just wanted to display these on my console table and a little candle tray with some pretty marble string lights, but you could totally use these displayed across a mantle, stacked on top of some books on a coffee table, or you can even just make a bunch of them for a really pretty centerpiece on a dining table. So I just love how simple but still festive these are, and they can easily blend into any decor style you might have going on in your home. Okay, so for this next project, I really thought it'd be fun if I could pull off a faux ceramic ornament. And I've done some faux ceramic napkin holders way back when, and I figured I could kind of try to do the same thing with an ornament. I just love the look of ceramics. I try to incorporate them throughout my home just because I feel like they give that really organic, handmade look to your space. So I thought it'd be fun if I could try some ornaments that were ceramic. So yeah, let's get into project number three and show you guys how I did it. Okay, so I just started with these ornaments that I got from the dollar store and I won't be using the glitter ones for this project just because I need a smooth surface to start out, but I'm thinking I'll just save those for another DIY. So I just popped off the little tops of all the ornaments and put them in a leftover egg carton that I had. So this will just hold them better and keep them in place as I spray paint them. So then I just went in with this chalked spray paint that I had laying around the house, but you could honestly use any white spray paint that you have or can get your hands on. So I just sprayed them a nice coat of white and once the tops had finished drying, I just flipped them all over and then I continued to spray the other side. So once all the ornaments had dried completely, I just took some tan paint that I had laying around and I added some water to it to kind of create a faux glaze. This is kind of gonna mimic a pottery glaze that you apply before you fire it in the kiln. So I just painted it on and made sure to do this in two separate coats. The first coat being a little more thin and light and then the second one being a little bit more pigmented just so it resembles that kind of glazed, faded watercolor effect. And while I liked the tan, I really wanted to do a pretty gray blue. So I just mixed these two apple bottom paints that I found at Walmart. And I also found that I liked a lot more gray than blue. So I just used gray for the base and then subtly tinted it with the blue. So for this one, instead of creating a full on watery paint mixture, I decided to just dip my paintbrush in water as needed. And I found that this gave me a lot more control when it came to the pigmentation. So the first coat I did, like I said, I did it a bit lighter. And then the second coat, I tried to make a little bit more pigmented. And this just really gives it that layered glazy look that I was going for with these. So this next step is where the magic happens. I use this Krylon clear glaze spray paint to finish these off and make them look like true glazy ceramic pieces. This stuff dries really shiny and creates that faux ceramic glaze look. And I will say that this stuff needs to be applied in really light coats or it will drip. So just keep that in mind. But once they had completely dried, I just went in and popped all of the gold tops back on. And next, it wouldn't be a true Jenna DIY without visiting the scrap fabric section at Walmart. So here you can get some really cheap fabric scraps and I found this really pretty taupey sheer fabric and I just cut a tiny square out of it and then I started cutting little snips and then ripping down the rest of the square. So this kind of created a little ribbon for our hanging part of our ornament. I love how this creates a really subtle frayed end. You can actually buy ribbon like this and it's usually pretty pricey so it's fun when we can create something super similar for a fraction of the price and this was only using a really tiny piece out of the entire scrap fabric that I had so one scrap piece can make a ton of ribbon and I just tied these on in a little double knot onto our ornaments using a toothpick to help me feed it through the hole and that is it you guys 
I absolutely love how these came out and that they totally look like handmade ceramic ornaments. And I love the softness that the frayed fabric scrap ribbon adds to the overall look. I think that these would look beautiful in any color, honestly, so you can customize it to your personal holiday color scheme. You can also make just a couple of these to give as gifts, or you can go crazy and make them for your entire Christmas tree. All right, you guys, so that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed. Definitely let me know in the comments if you are planning to do any of these or maybe you've done some DIYs in your home and let me know what you've done. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I appreciate you all so, so much and I hope that you have a happy holiday season and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.